guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new I don't work here lady content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled Don't You Know Who We Are? Exclamation mark. I had already switched from chef work to sommelier work, having left my first big sommelier job to take over as head sommelier slash executive manager of a restaurant group. The city I lived in was the capital, lots of embassies and lots of politicians, so the high-end restaurants would often get large parties of politicians and ambassadors. Because of this sort of clientele we had very high-end wine lists at all our restaurants, but not all of them were super expensive food-wise, and our house wine was very affordable also had lots of good wine by the glass. This made some of our locations very popular as a lunch spot for servers who worked in the area. One cloudy day I was sitting in a corner banquette, just doing paperwork, enjoying some moussaka roll-ups, like eggplant parmigiana almost but rolled up in with mashed potato inside as well as the cheese, tomato and herbs, this was a specialty for this Greek meze restaurant. The server on duty was pretty busy, she was new and didn't know me, I knew her though. She was doing all right serving everyone without too much problem, no one was waiting more than a few minutes to get attention. There was also a server from the restaurant across the street, not part of my group, but a regular, sitting and having a glass of house wine as she was organizing her tips from her shift, she looked like a server, in blacks, with a black short apron. Similar uniform to what was worn in our restaurant. In walks a bunch of people, group of six, I recognize one of them as an ambassador's aide, didn't recognize the others, four guys and two women, one of whom had the classic Karen hairdo. They don't wait at the front where the sign says to wait to be seated, they walk right into the dining room, push two tables together and grab extra chairs, they're sitting sprawling taking up lots of room in the middle of the dining room, talking loudly about how this place has a great wine list one of them says he's gonna order. They have now been in the restaurant for less than two minutes total, the server on duty can't see them from the corner where they do their side duties, she had been in the back serving the VIP room. At this point the group are already starting to complain that they haven't been served yet, which is when they notice the server from the other restaurant who was just enjoying her glass of wine. Ambassadors aid substantially louder than it needed to be, hey you, you can't drink on the job. Why haven't you taken our order yet? Exclamation mark. Karen hairdo, not at all under her breath, I can't believe how unprofessional that girl is. Then to the girl, we'll have you fired for this. Do you know WHO we are? Exclamation mark. Ambassadors aid, this is an outrage. Not our server girl, oh I'm sorry I don't work here, I work at a different restaurant, I'm sure a server will be here to take your order soon. Karen hairdo. Don't you give us that bull you lazy good for nothing. Incoherent mumbles. At this point I'm already not liking where this is going, but I decide to wait a minute to see how the new server handles it. She has arrived with her customer service smile plastered across her face. Actual server, pardon me I'm Mandy and will be your server for the day, can I take your order? Karen hairdo, finally. We've been waiting here for 20 minutes, maybe three tops, with no service. And your colleague here didn't even get up to greet us. She's just getting drunk, you can't drink on the clock, directed with malice at the innocent server girl from another restaurant, you need to fire her right now. I demand to speak to your manager. Do you even know who I am? I work for the redacted consulate, I could have both your jobs for this. It was at this point I finally recognized the lady, she was a receptionist for the consulate where she worked, I had seen her a year and a bit prior when she came with a large group for their office Christmas party. I could have stepped in at this point but I was curious how the new server, Mandy, would handle this. Mandy in an apologetic tone, I'm so sorry but I didn't see you arrive, normally people wait to be seated as the sign asks so I couldn't see you all sitting here. Please don't badger our guests though, that lady doesn't work here and is a paying customer. I believe she works at another restaurant down the street. 
Karen hairdo cuts her off. Don't you dare lie to me you little, redacted racial slur, I eat liars like you for breakfast. Rest of the six are egging Karen hairdo on at this point and I can see this may be escalating beyond what the server can handle. So I text the owner's son who lives upstairs, he's also a part owner in the group and sometimes does some managing of this location, happens to also be a bodybuilder and is huge. Less than 30 seconds later I get a BRT text from the owner's son. Karen hairdo, yelling in a shrill indignant voice, where is your manager? Get him now. You can't treat us like this. We are important people. Mandy was starting to look like she was going to cry at this point, and the not our server is shrinking back into the banquet as both of them were being yelled at incoherently by this group of six rude flunkies. At this point the assistant floor manager has arrived due to the screeching, but the six insane screechers are just ignoring her. I stand, take a couple steps toward them, take a deep breath and at the top of my lungs shout quiet now. I was an actor in high school and know how to project, so my voice fills the room. Everyone stops their shouting and turns to me. Me, at a more reasonable voice level, okay so here's what's going to happen, none of you need to speak to a manager, what you need to do, is grab your stuff, and get out. I won't have you shouting at my server, or my guests, no one deserves to be talked to the way you have been. And before you indignantly ask me if I know who you are, I do, I know exactly who you are, and I know your boss, and your boss's boss, both of whom love eating here and would be appalled at your behavior. At this point I notice Matthew, the owner's son has just come in through the kitchen door, dressed in his gym gear, glistening with sweat like some sort of Greek statue of Heracles, 6 FT4 and nearly 300 pounds of muscle. The look on his face just screams I just got here and I'm already completely done with this. I can see Karen Herodou is about to protest but I hold up my hand. And in my no-nonsense commanding voice, no, this is not a discussion, get up, and go, now. Karen Herodou in an injured indignant tone, well I never. Me, made her a factly, and you never will again, you can consider yourselves banned from this establishment. Matthew, owner's son slash part owner, rather louder than he really needed to be. Get out of my restaurant and don't even think of coming back, you're all going on the blacklist. Matthew's colossal form starts moving towards them and it seems the look on his face was enough to end any further discussion as the group grab their things and rush out of the restaurant. I thank Matt for coming down and interrupting his workout for the assist. The manager comps the not our server's meal and wine for her mart experience. Our server is told she did nothing wrong, that it's okay, she's not in any danger of being fired and in fact handled it about as well as she could have, she is given the rest of the day off with pay. The group each have a headshot pulled from security cams and are added to our digital blacklist, but it doesn't end there. I call the consulate and talk with the ambassador who is appalled by the behavior of his staff, all of whom arrive back at the consulate that day to find they have been fired for attempting to use their job to bully others. He comes in personally the next week to apologize to our server, manager and the owner's son in person, and assure us that the group no longer work at the consulate. Moral of the story, never use your position of perceived power to bully others, you may well end up losing that position. The next story is titled Classmate Mistakes Me as Working in the Park, begins to disclose fetishes. I was studying in the park by my house this afternoon when a cute guy around my age, wearing a sweatshirt from my college, sat down directly next to me. Thought that was kind of odd, especially during a global pandemic, so kind of scooched in the other direction. But then he started talking and he was like, so. Hi, I'm I'm Jose. All stutter why and not making eye contact and everything. I thought it was so sweet that he was this nervous to talk to me so I took the bait and said, oh, well, hi, I'm Tamira. And he says, oh. That's a really pretty name. I never would have guessed that would be your name. There was a long awkward pause as I tried to think what I could say in response to that and he goes, so, uh, how about a walk? Around the park? I thought that's really gutsy to ask, but you know what, I kind of like that. So I said sure and packed up my books and off we went. I figured it was middle of the day, 
surrounded by other people, so worst case scenario I could always ditch him if things felt shady. So we were walking and he was making more nervous small talk. I was telling him some stuff about my interests and background, asking him about his. He was like, wow, I didn't expect you to actually tell me so much about yourself. Wasn't sure how to feel about that, but, alright. He's like should I just, should I tell you a little more about me then? Because it is almost 3 pm. I figured maybe he had to go somewhere by 3 o'clock and I'd missed him mentioning it. So I was like, sure, tell me everything I should know about you. Figuring the whole experience to this point was like a fairy book or sitcom so I should just keep rolling with it. But then he says, maybe we should have this conversation at your place. Uh. I thought asking me, a total stranger, to stop what I was doing and take a walk with him was gutsy. But I thought what he just said was sleazy. At best. I kind of nervously chuckled as I looked for non-confrontational outs to the situation and said, aha, we're definitely not going to my place. He says, oh. Okay. Sure, fine. I didn't mean where you live necessarily I just meant the place, wherever it is we're going. I'm sure you've got something all worked out. Anyways, I can start telling you. Uh. About myself now, sure. He was kind of looking around to see if other people were listening and he goes, see, I'm really more of an ass kind of guy. I have a major spanking fetish. So if you've got any short skirts or, uh, ah uh, what? What what? Exclamation mark. Forget the non-confrontational exit, I instinctively went, stop. This conversation is over. And turned to hightail it into the nearest door. No shame at all if this is what you enjoy. It was a red flag for the stranger who'd picked me up in the park to be so forward about his sexual desires, regardless of what they were. The guy is running after me going, wait, what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I'm sorry. The ad said you were cool with kinks and stuff, I just thought, wow, I'm sorry. Alright, that slowed me down. I'm thinking, did he just say ad? He stopped near me now, catching his breath, going. Again, I'm so sorry, and look, this may be not be the best time to ask this, but am I still going to be charged? Like for the full time? Even if you're leaving? So, it took a second to figure out, but to make a long story short this poor guy was experiencing a touch of pandemic loneliness so went and hired a call girl off some personal section online. She told him she'd be there in the park wearing an identical graphic tee to mine, and we apparently have very similar features because she described the same height, build, hair, and eye color to mine. Once we got everything worked out he was especially apologetic and begged me not to speak of the encounter ever again in case we know anyone in common. I'm going to do my best to keep that promise. So instead I'm posting about it under the cloak of internet anonymity because oh my god I just had to tell someone. I definitely didn't work there, man. The next story is titled The Best R Slash I Don't Work Here Lady. I was at the hot topic at my hometown mall, cringy, I know looking for a new pop figure I need to complete my collection. Since the one I needs was a hot topic exclusive. I saw one of the employees struggling to restock, so I decided to help him out. It was heavy stuff to lift upon the shelves to be quite honest. Moments after, a lady about the same age as me walked up to me and showed me a picture on her phone, she seemed frustrated. The photo was of an item that they sell exclusively at Hot Topic, the same exact pop figure I was looking for. She then proceeded to ask me. Can you check in the back to see if you have this in stock please? She was pretty polite so I responded. Oh I'm sorry, I don't work here, but I would love to help you find it. She became furious, which I can understand. She then screamed. I just saw you stock the shelves, are you really that lazy that you have to tell me you don't work here? She then storms off. I became concerned considering it was a misunderstanding and nothing more, plus, she was already frustrated about the pop figure. I began to look for her so I could help her out. 
I found her speaking to the manager of Hot Topic. That's the guy I mentioned, I want this pop figure but he refused to check for me. I walked towards them and the manager said I am sorry, but he really doesn't work here. She then looked at me, annoyed but also embarrassed. Then stormed out. I walked up to the manager and inquired about the pop figure. He had three in stock, I purchased two of them. I walked out of the store, bag in hand, and walked towards the pretzel cart to get a bite to eat. I sat there for about in 15 minutes, then walked towards GameStop, I wanted a new game, but that's not why I went there. As soon as I walked in I saw the girl browsing the Pokemon section, I walked behind her and pulled out one of the pop figures, then basically displayed it in front of her face while I was behind her. She quickly turned around and saw me, her face went from bland to totally embarrassed. I told her to take it, she began frantically apologizing while I assured her it was no big deal either way, I then invited her to a drink, which she agreed to. Her name is Allison. We've been together for two years now. The next story is titled Don't Hold a Meeting in the Soda Isle. I live in an upper middle class suburb of NYC. Some of the people in my town are a bit entitled. Anyway on to the story. When I work from home I dress very casually, basically sweats and I don't bother shaving. I find weekdays to go shopping to be the best as the store is not too crowded. I wanted to get some diet soda for the weekend and a well-dressed late 20s slash early 30s man was on his phone, standing in front of the soda I wanted. I said excuse me and he rolled his eyes and said just because I'm wearing a suit and talking business on the phone doesn't mean I work here. I replied I just need to get what you're blocking. He huffed, mumbled something about lazy people who don't have a job to whoever he was speaking to and moved over. Now if that was the end of the story I wouldn't have bothered posting, but of course it's not. I heard him mention a type of case in our local state courthouse, next town over is the county seat, in the same practice area my wife and I practiced in when we were practicing law, I closed her firm when she passed, just wasn't the same. Our county is small enough so that if you're practicing for a few years, you know most of the lawyers and judges in your area of law. Still a little annoyed from our interaction I decided to play a bluff. I asked, are you talking about, type of, case in front of Judge X? Startled, he replied why do you want to know? My response it sounds like the case my wife and I are opposing counsel on in front of Judge X in courtroom 123 next week. Dude turned very white very fast. He was indeed talking about a case that was going to be in front of Judge X next week. Fortunately for him I remembered our case was the following week to let him know that he hadn't just royally messed up, followed with a suggestion he may not want to have those type of conversations where he can be overheard. Moral of the story, don't have a confidential conversation in public and don't underestimate some slob dressed in sweats. The next story is titled literally just happened at Panera. I wear bright blue scrubs for my job. I had a doctor's appointment, so I'm taking a later lunch, and decided to get curbside pickup. Unfortunately, the poor store is visibly swamped. After waiting about 15 plus minutes, I decided to walk in to pick up my order, no biggie, I have eyes, I see what's going on. After I collected my meal and walked out, a lady rolls down her window and starts waving and yelling her last name, I assume, over and over. I ignore her and get in my car with my bag, take out my delicious baguette, buckle my seatbelt, etc. When suddenly, she opened my car door. She started screaming about me taking her food or not delivering to her or something. I was in shock and fear. She grabbed my bread. I was so scared I started yelling for help. Thankfully some people on the patio, and the girl why was actually delivering food heard me screaming, and came. Side note delivery girl dropped this woman's bag of food to run and intervene, the police were called and while they were on their way, I finally understood what was going on. Look at me. I am in scrubs. I work at a hospital, not Panera you idiot. The manager of the Panera gave me some gift cards and more bread, and crazy lady was arrested. Bonus, she parked in a handicapped spot, and I think her car will be towed. If you enjoyed the video, 
please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.